Oh, hello, you, you caught me about to chop a tree down. It must be a story day. Oh, I'm Braggy and I'm a biking on this very wet day. Oh, yes. Don't go. Today's going to be an entertaining story from Scotland about a man called George Buchanan and the eggs. As I move my camera around to see if we can get a better view. There we go. So once upon a time, in those days of old, in the days of Scotland, there lived a man. And of course, if you go down south, you get the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings. But our man, he lived way up in the highlands of Scotland. And his name was George Buchanan. Oh yes, a good old name is George. And this story goes back to the later medieval times when names like George were more popular. And so our story begins. Now, George is a trader, a merchant. That's how he makes his coin. And because he lives in the highlands of Scotland, being a merchant was a valuable trade because all the people in the glens and in the mountains who wanted to buy things and could not afford to travel to a, a village where you could buy things or a big town, they had to rely on travelling traders. And that's what George was. He was a travelling trader. He had a base, a good long house, a good farmstead where he kept his wares and a horse and cart. And if people did not come to him, if people came to him to buy stuff, he would go to them. But it was getting, you know, towards the beginning of a new year and he had to go off to a town to go and buy some wares. He wanted to visit a smith and buy some sea axes and some knives and axes like this and various other things and cooking utensils, all the sort of things that in the medieval times people wanted to buy. And he had to go to a potterer's row to get some pottery because pottery was also very, you know, inexpensive to a certain degree. It was cheap, but it was very useful. And then after that, he went to a wood turner and brought a load of wooden bowls and wooden cups and stave cups. He went to a cooper and bought some barrels and buckets. Everything he needed to buy, he went. And he had a large bag of coin. And by the time, you know, he's done his job, you know, he, he was going to travel back. And he was going off to another big town to do some more deals, but in between there was a, a good 50 league travel. And so he thought, well, it's a bit far to travel in one day, I'm going to stay at inn in a small little village. And this is what he did. He got to the inn, and of course he's been there before in the past, and they said, hello George, come on in to the inn, and we can have some bread to throw you in your stomach if you're hungry and cheese and some stewies on the stove on the fire on the hearth and so you know old George paid a couple of coin for the lodgings for the night and you know had a bit of food but the only thing you got for your lodgings was a bed and a room and one meal and I in the middle of the night it was hungry and it was you know it wasn't quite in the early hours it was getting towards midnight and he thought he'll go downstairs because this was a, a two-storey longhouse, it had very tall it was, very unusual. And you know, he came downstairs and he, he asked the woman, have, have you got anything to eat? And the only thing she said, we've got two eggs, you can have these two eggs here, duck, you can have these these two eggs. And you know, he, he took the two boiled eggs away, and they were boiled, and thought nothing about it. And he enjoyed those eggs in his room, sat on his a bed and a bed would have been a wooden frame and there would have been rope in between the frame and if you're lucky you may have a mattress and if not you may have a bit of straw in a sack oh yes in those times things were much more primitive oh yes indeed and so he had his two eggs and he went back to sleep and in the next day the next morning he went off on his travels now some time passed a couple of years he had not been this way for two years. He's been going to another town down south where the wares and, and the goods were cheaper. But this time he couldn't do it. He didn't have the time to go and spend a whole month travelling. So he had to go to this town up, up north in Scotland. And of course, in between there and the town of 50 leagues, and a league is a distance of like a few miles, you know, he had to stay at this inn again. And so he got to the village with his horse and cart and, and he pulled up into the yard and there was a young boy, servant lad, took over his horse and did all that for him 
and then he went in the the old you know place where he's going to stay and an old man who owned it it's hello george you owe us 100 pounds by the way i said what do you mean i owe you 100 pounds well, when you last came here two, two years ago, you had two eggs and you did not pay for those two eggs in the morning. Now those two eggs could have been produced into chickens and we could have had more uh, ch uh, you know, chickens from those two eggs and more eggs and feathers. And so that has lost us a lot of coin. So you owe us a hundred coin and we're not gonna let you go from this place until you pay us. Oh, well, at that, old George was, very angry and upset. I mean, how ridiculous is that? You, you know, you get charged interest for two eggs. You know, I mean, how much is two eggs worth back in the medieval times? You know, not even a penny. I mean, that'll, you get a lot of eggs for a penny. So it's a fraction of a penny. You know, maybe maybe you'll, you get your, your axe and you maybe quarter it and give them a quarter of a penny. I think that'll be too much for two eggs. And that's what they used to do when you had a coin, one, you know, coin, and you wanted to pay half the coin, you just chop the coin in half. Can you imagine doing that these days to 50p's? Oh my God, coin enthusiasts will be shaking in their boots. And so he did the only thing he could do. As a Viking in the old days, he, like his granddad may have got his war axe out and gone to war, but no, he was going to be clever and use his brain and his mind. And so he sent a boy to get a lawyer and decided to gonna take the owner of this inn to court. And so the lawyer came, spoke to him, and then sent off the, the relevant paperwork to go to the court, which in the old times of the pagan ancestors of my grandfather would have been the old thing. And the man George Buchanan had representation. But the representation of the lawyer wasn't very good. And so George, on the day of the court hearing, realised that he was going to have to do something way more clever than what this lawyer is going to do. And so the day of the court and the court was in the nearby town because the village where the inn was was too small. He went and so did the inn owner and the lawyer which George hired, though it was useless. And they went to a court where it was being held by a magistrate. And a magistrate is a very old thing, it goes back to the Anglo-Saxons and we forget about this. And another title is a reeve as well. It's another sort of title from that sort of a thing. Which is a whole new subject for another day. And so George, he went into the old courthouse. And he said, for me to prove my innocence, I need to go outside to my stall. And so the magistrate agreed to this. And the magistrate went outside and was there a jury, I don't know. But all the people that was watching this court hearing went outside and, and George got out uh, uh, some wood and started a fire and put a, a little pot of water above the, the stove, you know, above the fire on the ground. You know, he got his flint and steel and, and got it going and got a spark with a bit of tinder and made a flame and blew it and the flame appeared and he, he got some more sticks and he made a little fire, you know. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to keep warm, he was trying to prove his point and innocence. And he then got a load of, a, a bag, a sack a, with a load of peas dried peas and he put them in the pot and he boiled them and so there you are people please gather around and come and get your free pea seeds come on and there was literally hundreds of peas in this little kettle he was boiling and so the magistrate came forward and said what are you trying to prove there George he said well we all know that you cannot grow peas from boiled peas and again with eggs you cannot grow a chicken from a boiled egg. And so I plead my case and my innocence. At that very point, the magistrate said, whoa, whoa, that is very true. And I will find you guilty and the 100 pound fine is cleared. And in fact, because of George has cost, been cost money, the magistrate awarded join, uh, George, not, I don't know what I said there, he, he awarded George some silver coin. And George actually came out of this deal very well. And like I said, this is an old Scottish folk tale called George Buchanan and the Eggs, taken from the Dictionary of Folk Tales. Oh yes, a very good book by Catherine Grigson. Oh yes. So if you like this story, 
if you like the tale and if you love folk tales on this channel in this very wet and rainy day I will pan around and you will see in the distance how it is raining out there and um, luckily I'm not getting too wet so do two things for us share the video with your friends and your aunties and your mates down the pub and anybody who's into storytelling vikings and history or just likes a good funny story which is entertaining and educational at the same time and number two is to you know smash that old like button get out your hypothetical war axe and whack it and give it a good good old like the more people like the videos the more times you watch the videos the more time you share the videos it will really help the channel grow and we can achieve wonderful big things on this channel when we reach millions of views every month and that is achievable so goodbye from me i'm going to go in now and dry off with a bit of wool because in those times of the vikings we had no towels i'm not really going to chop this tree down it's too nice It's got ivy growing up it. <laughs>